Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the webinar, how would AI shape future integrations? Okay, so uh, let's start with a quick look at uh, integration. Uh, what do we mean by that? And so uh, there was a time that most organizations had a single system. Uh, most of these systems were building uh, building house, uh, most probably ad hoc systems that uh, get whatever scenarios they wanted them. But soon uh, the share of computing systems in organizations grew, like for accounting, for payroll, for CRM, etc. And uh, it, it was not possible for each organization to write their own systems. So, uh, so and then uh, these systems start coming to the market. Now, uh, at mo initially, most of the time, organizations went to the one vendor. Uh, uh, the vendor would give you a, a set of systems that is already integrated that works well together. Uh, so, okay, that worked. Uh, but um, each of these systems grow more and more complex. And uh, vendors start to specialize in this uh, system and uh, soon it become impossible for an organization to get the best system by picking a single vendor okay so uh, then after a few years the uh, b2b transactions come into play for example if you take uh, if you're booking a uh, uh, airline ticket that goes to several sectors. Uh, then you need multiple airlines to work together. Now, uh, of course, customers can book each ticket independently, but uh, to make it work, to they start demanding that the airlines work talk to each other. This is just an example. So uh, soon the, uh, the systems within organizations had to talk to systems outside. And the, then in the, when you come to this point, uh, there's very little control over the systems you have versus the systems you connected to, because it could be very different. When, and if you look at now, uh, some of these systems uh, has been replaced by APIs and cloud services. Uh, so this, now in, if you take an organization, they have a very different set of systems that are built by different vendors and you would cross the organization boundaries and connect to other systems and other APIs. Uh, so these systems often use different formats, different timing, different logic, et cetera. And um, for organization to work, these systems has to work together. Uh, integration try to solve this problem. The classical integration solutions use the ESP, Enterprise Service Bus, which sit between all these systems and translate from uh, messages from one system to the other. Uh, the thinking at this time is to uh, keep the all the integration logic in one place. Also, ESBs provide specific constructs that make these integrations easy. Now, if you look at now the after micro microservices architecture, etc., the integrations are no longer done by one single centralized um, server. At least the, the new systems in the new systems that's been built. 
there are many micro integrations that, that uh, take care of different parts of the integration and they connect systems as well as APIs. Uh, so this is the setting we are looking at. Okay, so and the today focus of our webinar is that we, we talk about AI and how would AI affect this integration problem. So what is AI? Now, if you think about uh, our day-to-day -day life, there are some tasks such as making a coffee that we can do and we can explain precisely how to do it. If you want somebody else to make the similar coffee, you could write it down. However, there are some other tasks, such as driving a car, that we can do, but we can't explain how to do it. You cannot teach your kid to drive by writing a detailed instruction manual and saying that, please read this, you will be fine. That's not true. So there are these, there are a lot of tasks that we do. We know we can do it, but we can't really explain how we do it. We don't know. We don't know exactly how we drive or how we identify a cat versus uh, make some of the decisions, how we recognize a face. Uh, we do it. We do it almost. We do it without understanding what's going on. So some of these are inbuilt into us. Some of these we learn. Example, if you take driving, we learn with somebody who will know how to drive. We would drive and they would say, okay, do these parts different. So the same is true for computers. Now, any task that you can explain step by step how to do, we could write an algorithm. And we can ask computer to do that. However, these, these intelligent tasks that are hard to explain, you cannot write an algorithm to do it. There are, if you try to do it, actually using rule-based systems, we try to do it and then there are too many edge conditions. The way usually we solve these kind of problems using, is using AI. We take AI, give it many examples, and from those examples, it learns how to do that task. The Android NG has this rule that they can do anything human can do in 10 seconds or less. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a pretty good guideline to think about. Okay. Okay, great. AI can learn from examples and learn things that we do, how to do the, how to repeat the things we do. But why do we care? Because compared to humans, these tasks that computer can do using AI, it can do much faster, thousands to millions of times faster. And these tasks are very cheap to replicate. And these tasks are much more reliable. The, if we ask humans to do the same task, very often we make mistakes. Computer almost never make mistakes. Also, you could use the, these algorithms, these AI algorithms, to extrapolate the future. What this means is this enable us using computers to do some tasks very, very cheaply and at a very different scale than before. For example, we could all read number plates. 
vehicle number plates. However, nobody had tried to build a complete tracking system for vehicles by reading number plates because it's too expensive. Presumably, you can like get million people and ask them to uh, report the every uh, number plate they see, send it to a central system, and you could track every vehicle where it is. But it will be too expensive. However, if you're using AI-based uh, number plate reader, you could do this with, with much more cheaply because the AI will do it much faster. It would be much cheaper. And of course, it won't uh, miss a lot of papers compared to humans. So what that means is AI very AI potentially changed the world works in very fundamental ways. Because things that were impossible or very expensive suddenly become possible. And the AI-based computers would completely take over some tasks human would do. Also some tasks that were too expensive to do it larger scale. So let's let's discuss why would why would integration would be benefit from AI. There are three main reasons. The first is cost savings. Computers are much cheaper than humans in the long run. So uh, so those systems would be cheaper. Also having a human in the loop slow down most interaction. For example, if if there is a reliable way to approve a loan or to shortlist a CV, that would be much cheaper than using human. So AI can pinpoint problems, sometimes predict the problems, and proactively fix those problems. AI can also increase usability of systems, and AI can analyze and optimize systems. So using this, you could go get many cost savings. Number two, the AI can give you a competitive advantage. AI might enable tasks that were infeasible before, like number plate tracking, face recognition, doing uh, things pers personalized way or give, uh, reaching specific customers, etc. Sometimes the AI can do tasks much better and more frequently. For example, if there is an AI system that could diagnose uh, diseases, most likely it would be much cheaper because you could do a very large scale system. The IBM Watson is trying to do is do it right. You could um, most probably give a diagnosis much cheaper, and it would learn from every exam, every mistakes. Any mistake that happened, it would learn. That's not the same true for doctors, unless it's a very publicized example. So AI can also make better decisions and do forecasts, which, which could let organizations optimize. Also, it might help humans make better decisions by uh, showing the data in context and helping in exploring the data. Finally, AI can provide predictable performance. For example, we know a customer, they use 
image processing. Uh, they, they use uh, vision technologies to do quality control. And since that was introduced, the chance that the low quality product would go out to, of their pipeline is much more smaller because the computer is much, much more reliable. Also, it gives, uh, what, what he explained was that we, once he shows that the quality control happened through uh, AI, they are direct customers, the brand, were very confident to pick them because that suggests a very high reliability. And the third, the AI data analyzed through AI and the insights derived can be used to create new value and create new revenue. One famous example is that Walmart shares data about their product, product they sell with their suppliers. So the suppliers know how to optimize their products. Also, many organizations make money by selling insights they derive from data. For example, a, a telco may share the high level trends uh, region-wise high-level trends with their customers. Or they could use targeted marketing. Because, if, for example, if you take a um, telco, they know where you live. If they, if, if, they, if they go through the data, they know where you live. They know who your friends are. They know your social, uh, how much roughly, you, uh, what wealth category you belong to, based on how you top up your uh, bills, etc. So using this, without ex uh, telling who you are, they might do targeted advertising or give very high level insights and sell them. And uh, also very often credit card companies also know a lot about you based on how you spend. So those um, behaviors, they already sell and make money. So let's let's try to look at how feasible is AI. It is pretty feasible. In many fields, it is already defeated in human performance. And there are most of the AI tools are open source. There are a lot of public data sets that has enabled us to enable multiple groups to work, work on the same problem using same data sets so that the learnings can be used and verified by each other. This has helped AI to grow very fast. And there are very significant investments already. So the AI as it is, there are, it is feasible. It can be done in many places. There are, there are challenges that we'll get to there. But the base technology is there. So the, the first challenge AI face is lack of skilled people who could do it. The data scientists and programmers who could do AI are in very short supply and they are very expensive. Often they cost about 300 to $500,000 per year which means that it's very hard for medium and small size organization to hire and attract that kind of people. So there are many potential solutions on the web, such as like trying to create wizards that help AI, trying to uh, map your AI into a database so that you could query 
and you could do AI like the database queries, or map it to a spreadsheet, uh, creating automatic statisticians that will go through the data and automatically uh, find interesting things, build models, etc. However, all these are in, still in initial stages and often very expensive and less reliable. So the consequence is that most APIs, AI solutions would likely to be delivered by companies that specialize on them rather than um, uh, organizations. Very large organizations can afford to build their own custom models but most of the other organizations would use cloud APIs. Now, this is only possible if the data formats are reasonably standard and the KPIs are well defined. Among examples are uh, healthcare, some marketing sites, the spatial temporal models, etc. For example, there are many companies that specialize, uses AI to optimize market. The next challenge is that there are not enough data sets because um, the now AI and machine learning, there are many, uh, many fields under development. The most developed field that give best results are called supervised learning. What that means is that it need labels data set. It need, you need, it need the data and it needs the uh, right answer for that data. Then for you looking at that, it could learn. Now that kind, but that kind of data sets are limited. If you look at current AI examples, the most advances have happened in the cases where there's enough data such as voice recognition etc where when there are enough data we could we could use current models to build uh, or match and even surpass uh, surpass human performance but this data collection is hard for example if you have a system that collects 10,000 data points per day, it would take three years to collect 1 million data points. If you need 10 million data points, it takes 30 years. Which means that the data sets that we are expecting in the same sizes are hard to find. So there are People are working on different approaches, such as transfer learning. That is, the idea is that you could transfer what you learn from a, for example, let's say you have, a, you want to uh, detect, uh, uh, detect people uh, entering your company. Now, the, the light in there, et cetera, would be very different. Now, it, but it's very hard to have big enough data sets from that point, push, um, that place only that can give enough accuracy. So the transfer learning would let you get a lot of uh, similar but different data sets, learn from there, then fine tune that using this small amount of specific data sets. Similarly, semi supervised and unsupervised learning let you learn without labels or only a little bit of labels. The other challenge is interpre interpretability because the models cannot be used in some places, such as credit scores or even health cases. Uh, unless you know why the model is making that decision. Also, um, the, the 
AI models can themselves be attacks. For example, uh, somebody might try to feed the wrong uh, sample data to get it to behave in uh, problematic ways. And uh, it's not easy to know. For example, if a model make a wrong decision, uh, we couldn't go back and say this data may cause this. And so we can't track that. So these could be challenges when you try to apply. So ne next, let's look at some risks because the AI faces some significant risks. Now, first, it's it's important to understand that the mistakes AI make given the same mistake that AI might make and a human might make. The former is much, much more dangerous. This is due to three reasons. First is that AI is getting everywhere. More and more things in our lives would have AI. So any bias, any, any mistakes that you could make would affect you. The second is that because the AI is usually cheap to repeat, it would be applied in a much larger scale than with human. So the, any of these mistakes would be significantly multiplied. And thirdly, Thirdly, uh, unlike humans do it, when AIs do it, we generally don't see it. If a human makes the mistakes because a lot of other people see it, there's a chance that it can be connected. But the AI would happen, uh, for example, let us say that the uh, AI would read number plates wrong. Now that data would be collected without anybody knowing. And for example, if the police may use that data to make some decisions, it could be wrong and nobody would, because there's no way you can go back and check. So there are, uh, there are several challenges. First is bias. The idea of bias is that AI might learn, learn the bias inherent to humans and repeat those biases. Again, due to the, as before, the effect would be much more dangerous than having the bias in humans. For example, let's say you are using AI to uh, shortlist CVs. Uh, if humans are doing it, there's a lot of diversity among humans. They would disagree, etc. So, on average, uh, most problems would be cancelled out at least, at reduced. But if the AI is doing it, and if it is biased against certain kind of candidates, it would remove them without anybody seeing it. However, the removing bias is very hard. For example, it's not a matter of removing any inputs that might cause bias. For example, an address could be a proxy for race, name could be a proxy for gender, or even the name of the degree might be a proxy for the age. So if you try to remove bias, you need to find these all all these kind of relationships and remove them, which is very hard. Finally, if the AI use case end up between two AI algorithms pitted against each other, often that would lead to a lose-lose situation because the, uh, it, the competition would move to a different level without anybody getting 
new advantages and everybody would pay more because now the competition happens at other level. I think we have seen this happening in stock markets. Uh, finally, uh, the AI can infer a lot, lot of sensitive data from seemingly harmless information. For example, just using your accelerometer data, very likely it could find where you live. Using your electricity signals, it could potentially tell what you are watching. Or it could track complete travel history using just automatic number plate reading. So it's very likely that it's very hard to um, have privacy because uh, most of sensitive data can be derived in other means. Due to privacy, uh, and these challenges, it's uh, the it's likely governments would add create policies to control this. Uh, for example, already we see uh, rules uh, policies such as GDPR, uh, and we saw that the San Francisco uh, uh, stop limited the use of face recognition in public places. Um, so these, uh, for example, if you are trying to do a AI use case, these uh, the so this change in government policies also become a challenge. Okay, so so far we discussed what is AI, why someone would use AI, and. Uh, So we discussed what is AI and why somebody would use AI. Uh, now, and the, then the feasibility risk and challenges. Now let us look at some of the macro trends that we believe is happening. The first trend is that because AI depends on data, access to data become, could become a significant advantage. I'm sure you have heard this idea of network effect. This is the idea that whoever, whoever get into that market, for example, if you think of the data, if having more data would give you better AI, whoever get the AI out first would collect more and more data and they would be in a significant advantage and it would be very hard for others to beat them. When these kind of network effects are there, it makes sense for uh, the organizations to invest significantly to capture the market because when you get to the market, you get to a position that is very hard to attack. Among examples are tele phones, the social networks, etc. However, this, this view has been challenged because um, some argues that at least in some use cases, uh, adding more data has diminishing advantage, which means that the, you can't lock in the market by just having the data. However, in general, having access to data is on average a significant advantage. What that means is, we believe what that means is most of the AI would be offered as cloud data. Because if, if the solution is provided as a on-premise installation, the vendors won't get the data. Whereas if the solution run in the cloud, 
vendors get to collect the data. So the vendors can concentrate both the data and expertise by offering the solution and cloud APIs. This also significantly reduces the complexity of uh, managing the models because uh, it's not clear how a vendor could update the local models. Uh, if you uh, if you install it in on prem So what that means is the large companies that has large uh, lot of data has a significant advantage. So let us go through a few use cases. Uh, the, we'll go through six related to AI and integration. The first use case, it's not really an AI use case. However, if you try to do AI, what that means is you need to bring the data from many sources in the organization to one place analyze them carry out actions and sometimes expose these uh, data through apis what that means is the most api ai use cases indirectly create many integration use cases which is a uh, which is interesting development the second use case is that ai can be used to enhance inputs the computers usually take inputs through GUIs, command line interfaces and computer languages how oh, they are but they are not natural for humans that's why we have to train the programmers with specifically to handle this whereas ai enable to take input from much more natural sources such as the audio video and natural language uh, which is very natural to humans among examples are object detection natural language processing chatbots a uh, few years back there was a case that um, a complete football game was analyzed just through a video um, so so these kind of um, basically using AI for enhancing, uh, getting better inputs uh, can significantly increase the reach of our system. And uh, you could say that uh, the integrations could uh, go beyond the systems and even reaching humans. And uh, basically interacting with humans in much more meaningful ways. The third use case is that any vendor that has access, that has access to the data or data storage just can start building AI on top of these data sources. The best examples is Salesforce Einstein, where uh, they they offer AI within their using the customer Salesforce data, and this is a great uh, opportunity for the customers because they get AI almost without any additional investment. They might they would have to pay, however, they would only have to pay if the AI really helps. It removes the risk of many AI. Also, this use case, for example, if you take Salesforce, uh, one customer would benefit from all other customers' data because uh, the Salesforce has much wider data sets to train their models. The fourth use case is um, the AI can be used to uh, optimize operations, system operations. The idea is to reduce or eliminate the new need for human intervention. This involved auto tuning systems, doing predictive maintenance, detecting anomalies, uh, the triggering deep observation. That means uh, when the system thinks that something is anomalous, it can increase the resolution of their sensors. 
so that you would have much more uh, for example it might change the login level for to uh, debug uh, when uh, anomaly happens and also it could help in analysis and root cause finding root causes uh, it could also do like chat based control and things like automatic compliance and QS check. The fifth, fifth use case is actually the AI can help programming and reduce the barrier between programmers and non programmers. Uh, there are two potential approaches. The first is that. Um, you could um, ask users to visually draw their integration. Now, visual programming is something people has been trying for many years. Uh, however, the challenge is that, okay, so there's a palette, you could drag and drop things and connect the flow. Now, the reason the visual programming haven't really took off at this point, uh, users need to open a form and fill in a lot of details mapping these connections. However, AI can potentially automatically figure out how to map, do these connections. That would mean that users can literally drag and drop and connect and it will work. So this is one approach. Second approach is that potentially user can describe what to do in English. And the AI-based systems could uh, listen and clarify any unclear questions by asking questions and uh, building the program automatically. Uh, these are, the full versions are not there. There are some initial work people have done. But very likely these are the future that we are looking at. The final use case we'll talk about is the AI basic. Uh, so AI can be used for fraud detection adaptive authentication the idea is that uh, based on uh, it would look at your context and ask for different levels of uh, authentication for example it might ask for the password and the pin uh, if you come from the same machine similar condition it might just ask for the pin etc uh, so in other examples are detection session hijackings, detection sensitive data in messages and holding messages. The continuous authentication, this is uh, that it would let in easily. However, if you're trying to do any critical operations, it would uh, ask for further authentication. However, when you look at AI-based security, um, I think, this is a very challenging area because the AI can be used for attacks as well as for defense. A lot of the use cases that's been discussed are on the defense side. However, the using AI, the attackers can scan, find vulnerabilities, give passwords, even mimic uh, the, for example, for do social engineering, for uh, for phishing, etc. They they might create perfect messages that come from the people you most trust, etc. Uh, now, in general, it's much easier to attack than defend. Uh, so, in this AI based AI based security scenarios, it's not very clear what would happen, and uh, it could be that the, the security in the future would be much more expensive due to these uh, challenges. Uh, so uh, we, we only went through six use cases, but we have identified 11. Uh, and uh, we have basically analyzed them on how critical they are. Because if they, if they face critical conditions, uh, the People who build models has to be, if they take critical decisions, people who build model has to consider many aspects. So you need uh, deep knowledge for building such models versus more non-critical systems uh, 
uh, you could use a much wider set of data scientists. Also, uh, some of these technologies are already ready, while some needs a um, lot more work. Uh, okay. So this is the end of the webinar. Let, uh, so, uh, uh, so a few uh, interesting observations are that um, the AI use cases create many integration use cases indirectly. Uh, also, if you use AI, you had to be uh, careful because mistakes AI make can be much more harmful than human because of broad integration, uh, deep rep cheap, very cheap replication and transparent applications. And uh, most of the AP AI use cases will be delivered as cloud uh, because it let vendors collect the data. Uh, because it's hard for organizations to build custom models, find expertise to build it. Uh, also, the cloud enable organizations to concentrate expertise as well as simplify the de develop deployment. Uh, among use cases, we found that the security data integration enhances inputs and um, AI support within existing data sources already has systems available and likely to find wider adoption. Uh, we found that usability, self-driving operations, automatic and self-service integration um, still face some challenges and would need some few years more. Uh, and business automation uh, is unlikely to be you, done by SMEs unless uh, this, those operations are supported by cloud data. Uh, so this this analysis for this analysis we use this framework called ETAC Emerging Technology Analysis Scanner. Uh, so uh, we would very uh, soon share the uh, the report uh, done based on this analysis. Uh, if you like to be notified, please subscribe to this our newsletter. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us in the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, you could type ask them through the system. Uh, we would take a minute to uh, answer any questions, uh, or you could drop me a mail. Uh, my email address was mentioned on the starting slide. Uh, thanks very much. We'll wrap up the webinar. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to drop a mail. Thanks very much. Have a good day.